In our recent video on how to focus a Gavo laser, we showed off a laser cut jig that allows you to easily set the correct focal distance for your lens. Using a jig like this will make setting up jobs quicker and more repeatable. In this video, we'll go through the steps of designing this jig in Lightburn and running the job to create it. If you are newer to Lightburn, this will show you how to use some of the common design tools as well as the general workflow from design to finished product. To follow along with this video, you will need two measurements, the focal distance of the lens you are creating a jig for and the width of your lens. If you do not know the focal distance yet, our video guide covering the process will be linked in the description. Once you have your focal distance, you can either use a ruler or digital calipers to measure the width of your lens. For my 70mm lens, the focal distance is 101mm and the width of the lens is 86mm wide. You will also need a laser capable of cutting a thin sheet of wood. I'm going to be using a diode laser, but a CO2 laser would work even better. Even if you do not have the means to cut the jig out, the design process can be helpful to watch. With our measurements written down, we are ready to jump into Lightburn to start designing. Heading to the left toolbar, start by clicking on the square icon to activate the rectangle tool. Then click in the workspace and drag downward to create a vertical rectangle. In the top toolbar, click on the lock icon to unlock the shape's aspect ratio. Type 10 in the width text box to set the width of the rectangle to 10 millimeters and then enter your lens's focal distance in the height text box. For my lens, this is 101 millimeters, but you'll want to use the focal distance specific to your lens. With the rectangle tool still active, click again in the workspace and this time drag to the right to create a horizontal rectangle. Set the height to 10 millimeters and the width to the width of your lens plus 30 millimeters. My lens is 86 millimeters wide and with the added 30 millimeters, I will make the width of the rectangle 116 millimeters. Next, hit the escape key twice or click on the mouse pointer icon in the top of the left toolbar to get into select mode. Click on the horizontal rectangle to select it. You'll know it's selected by the moving squiggly lines. Then hold down the shift key and click on the vertical rectangle to also select it. In the top toolbar, click on the Align Selected Objects Horizontally button and then choose Align to Top. You will see the horizontal rectangle has now moved its location and is aligned with the top of the vertical rectangle. Now click on the Align Selected Objects Vertically button and choose Align Vertical Center. Once again, the horizontal rectangle will move and it is now at the very top and center, forming the letter T with our vertical rectangle. Next, we will create two more rectangles with a width of 10 millimeters and a height of 20 millimeters. Once you've created the first one, you can go to selection mode and hit Control C and Control V on Windows or Command C and Command V on Mac to copy and paste a second one. Select one of the matching rectangles and then shift click on the horizontal rectangle. In the horizontal alignment dropdown, align to bottom, and in the vertical alignment dropdown, align to left. Then for the other small rectangle, we will rinse and repeat, but this time choose bottom for horizontal and right for vertical alignment. Now that we have the rectangles how we want them, we're ready to combine them into one shape. The weld function is used to combine multiple vector shapes together into a single entity that is the outline of the selected shapes. Before using the weld function, click and drag around all the rectangles in the workspace to select them. Then clicking on the weld button in the left toolbar, the selections of the rectangles that are overlapping will disappear, leaving us with the final outline of our shape. If weld does not work, make sure that your shapes are not grouped together. Our design is looking great and all that's left is to add some text to it. This will help us keep track of which lens the jig is for, which will be very helpful with multiple lenses. In the left toolbar, click on the A icon to activate the text tool and click in the workspace to place the text cursor. We will start by typing the name of the lens this jig is for. For me, this is my 70 millimeter lens, so I will type lens size 70 millimeters. Then hit the escape key on your keyboard twice to get back into selection mode. In the top toolbar, there are a lot of options to customize your text. I'm going to stick with the default Arial font and set the height to 6, but feel free to adjust the styling to your liking. The key design need is to ensure that your text fits on the 10mm width of the jig. When you're happy with how your text is looking, click on the center box on your text and drag it onto the horizontal rectangle. 
I'm just going to eyeball it roughly centered in height and place it towards the left side. Using the text tool once again, type focal distance and the focal distance of your lens. For mine, I will type focal distance 101 millimeters. Using the selection tool, click on the curved rotation arrow on the outside of the text and drag to rotate it. Holding down the shift key while dragging will rotate in 15 degree increments, making it much easier to get the text vertical, which is what we are wanting. Finally, click on the center square of the text and move it onto the vertical rectangle. We are done with the design and we are now ready to set things up for the laser. Currently, our shape and text are on the same layer, which we can easily see by them being the same color in our workspace. We want the text to be engraved with a fill pass and the shape to be cut with line mode, so we need to change that. Hold shift and click on both blocks of text to select them. Then, click on a different color in the color palette on the bottom toolbar to assign it to the text. I went with blue, but the color does not matter as long as it's different from the color of our shape. In the cuts and layers window, set the shape layer to line mode by selecting line from the mode drop down menu. Speed and power will greatly vary depending on your laser and the material you are using. For my Xtool D1, which has a 10 watt diode laser, I am setting the speed to 300 millimeters per minute and the power to 80% with two passes for the three millimeter project wood that I am using. For the text layer, set the mode to fill mode. Since we do not want our text to cut through, I'm increasing the speed to 10,000 millimeters per minute and lowering the power to 50% with only a single pass. With our cuts and layers set, we're ready to preview our design output. In the top toolbar, click on the monitor icon to open the preview window. Pressing the play button will show a simulation of the current job. The black lines are where the laser will be firing and the thinner red lines represent travel movements. We can also scrub the slider back and forth to quickly see the output. In this case, we can see that the outline runs first and then the text engraving. We want the text to engrave before the shape is cut out. Click OK to close out of the preview window and select the fill layer in the cuts and layers window. Then click the up arrow on the right side to move the fill layer on top of the line layer. Lightburn will execute the job from top to bottom. So by moving the fill layer to the top, it will run the fill pass first. One more time, we will open the preview window and we can now see the text is engraved first and then the line passes of our shape will run. You should always check the preview window before running a job to make sure that the expected output matches what you are seeing. If the order is not what you expect, check that your optimization settings are correct. This will save you from headaches and damaging expensive materials. We are ready to place the material we are engraving in our laser's work area. Since we will be cutting through the material, be sure to place some scrap material underneath to prevent damage to your work surface. For the start from mode, I'm going to use current position and centered. If you're not familiar with the different start from modes in Lightburn, check out our understanding the different start from modes video. This will be linked in the description. The last step before running our job is to click the frame button in the laser window to make sure that our job will be running where we want it to on our material. Once confirmed, hit start to begin running the job. Even with slow cutting speeds, this should not take more than a couple of minutes to complete. If all goes well, you should now have your jig cutout ready to be used. If you have multiple lenses, this is a great project to repeat for each of them. This has been a great practical project and you should now have a much better understanding of some of the design tools available in Lightburn as well as the general workflow from design to finished product. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to not miss any new videos and check out our existing tutorial playlist for additional guides on mastering Lightburn.